Hello everyone. Our presentation is on extending the signed non-zero bit and sign aligned column methods to general basis for use in cryptography. The presentation is divided into the following sections. First, introduction, where we are going to talk about a few important and recent works on recording algorithm and our contribution after those developments. Then we focus on some theoretical results that are the building blocks of our algorithm. Moving on, we will talk about some cryptographic applications of those algorithms and we'll wrap up with some concluding remarks on some future work. We know the wire stress form of elliptic curves over a finite field is of the form y square equals x cubed plus ax plus b. The points that satisfy the wire stress curve along with point at infinity forms a group. A scalar multiplication algorithm computes a times p for a given n bit scalar a and a base point p on an elliptic curve. The key advantage of using an elliptic curve is it has negligible cost for a point inversion. Elliptic curves can be seen being used in Diffie Hellman type crypto system. In elliptic curve Diffie Hellman key exchange, both single and multidimensional scalar multiplications are used. Our work focuses on variable scalar fixed base setting where the input scalars are unknown and the base point is fixed. A few examples would be double and add Strauss multidimensional scalar multiplication, split and com method, D and DML, etc. In ECDH, an attacker deploying side channel attack, for example, simple power analysis, will gain information about the bits of the scalar. So the scalar multiplication algorithm needs to be regular in nature. A Strauss-like algorithm can be made regular by recording the scalar into a representation which contains no zeros in it. There are signed digit recording for both in binary and k equals 2 to the power m base while sign aligned column recording is done for binary case. Talking about our contribution, we generalized the signed non-zero bit scalar recording algorithm to any positive integer base. We give two algorithms, recode and align. Recode can serve as the generalization of the signed non-zero bit recording. It can record the k representation of a scalar to a signed non-zero sequence. While our align algorithm can take a sequence of one and negative one or one bar and the k representation of a scalar as its input and records it in such a way that the entries of the new sequence either equals zero or agrees the sign of the sign sequence. Our recording and sign element algorithms are regular in nature. We also give a scalar multiplication algorithm that uses both record and align, rather optimized align, which is an alternate regular form of align. This algorithm computes A times P for any positive integer base greater than one. We also compare base k equals two and k equals three case for our scalar multiplication algorithm. And according to our analysis, we obtain some theoretical evidence where k equals three may outperform k equals two in certain scenarios. Now let me introduce some definitions of a few terms which are used quite often in our theoretical results. An L string is a sequence of integers of L entries or of length L. The k array value is just the sum uh, summation ai to the, uh, ai times k to the i for the sequence uh, al minus one to a zero. We call a string good if it does not have a zero in it, and it is bad if it is of the form all zeros except the last one from left to right. We also define a function f on set of good strings and bad strings that keeps the good strings unchanged and turns the bad strings into a good strings by replacing zeros by one and minus uh, k minus one and the non-zero last entry c0 by negative k minus c0. We, can, we notice that the output of the function, uh, ha, um, the entries of the output of the function 
lies in the set plus minus one plus minus two uh, to plus minus k minus one we also observe in lemma five that any l string is concatenation of good strings and bad strings and the following two results show that the bad strings within an l string can be changed to a good uh, to, can be changed to good strings by applying the function f after all the bad strings are replaced by the good strings the k array value remains unchanged theorem 8 says that any positive integer which is not a multiple of k its k array representation can be recorded by getting rid of all its bad strings by applying the function f on each of its good and bad strings for an example we have this uh, sequence 102210102 where we can clearly uh, identify 02 01 and 002 are the bad strings so this bad string can be removed by applying the function f uh, and op uh, obtaining the good strings 1 minus 1 1 minus 2 and 1 minus 2 minus 1 and after the this sequence being recorded the three array value is unchanged now we observe that the length of bad strings in a sequence are likely to be different so the process of replacing bad strings by good strings is not regular in nature so we so we introduce a regular algorithm that traces the strings left to right for each two consecutive entries at a time and replaces the second one by the entries of this lookup table so here is our record algorithm this algorithm replaces the second entry for each pair of entries ai comma ai minus one left to right uh, from the table by ai comma ai minus one th entry of the table and this record algorithm increases the length of the input string by one theorem nine serves as the correctness of the record algorithm it says that replacing bad strings by good strings will give us some non-zero signed representation which is obtained from the record algorithm so for an example uh, if, uh, if we have this if we are given uh, this string 10221010002 uh, we trace uh, two uh, two entries from left to right and each, each and each time uh, i uh, i trace zero, suppose for example i trace 0 and 1 and i replace 1 by the entry 0 comma 1th entry from the lookup table and the first entry is always 1 of the output next we will discuss about sign alignment algorithm our align algorithm inputs a, a sign sequence of 1 and 1 bar of length l plus 1 while the length of the input scalar is l uh, the algorithm records the scalar right to left by tracing two simultaneous entries at each steps it follows the following table so in this table we can say the top row is one or minus one which is the entries of the sign sequence and the column represents entries of the input scalar so now let's look at an example so suppose we are given this sign sequence and an integer uh, uh, and an integer which has the three array representation as one zero two zero one two zero so in this example the top row is the sign sequence and all the bottom rows represent bi's or rather the updates of bi uh, at each of it uh, each of the uh, iterations of our algorithm so for example we look at the first entry from the sign sequence and first entry from the uh, from the scalar from right and we'll go back to the table so in the table when si is one and bi is zero we will not change anything that's that's why we we, we do not make any change on this row and in the next row we can see that our next entry is uh, next sign uh, next sign entry is negative 1 and and bi is 2 so if we go back to the table when it is negative 1 and bi is 2 uh, we change bi with minus k minus bi and we increase 
the uh, in increase the next digit by one or we add one to the next entry that means two will be changed to minus one and one will be changed to means one will be added to the next digit which is one that that will give me two okay so in this way we can record the scalar and obtain the last row as the output of the algorithm which is the recorded sc uh, scalar which agrees the sign sequence and after this algorithm is being performed the three array value remains unchanged and this theorem 10 is the correctness of the align algorithm now this is our al align algorithm but you can see that there are lots of con conditional steps in it which does not allow the algorithm to be regular so we give an alternate version of the algorithm to get rid of the conditional steps we use an indicator function in that case so in our iteration steps there is no if and else segment which makes it regular in nature so you can see in the optimized align algorithm we used indicator function to get rid of all the uh, if and else segment and this is this uh, this is a regular in nature next we discuss about the cryptographic applications of our recording algorithms our algorithm is suitable with uh, with variable scalar fixed base type uh, scalar multiplication we also notice that if pre computation has low cost for instance on curve with, with uh, efficient endomorphism vsvb setting can also be suitable for our scalar multiplication that means variable scalar variable based setting can also be suitable for our scalar multiplication algorithm basically what our algorithm does is that it splits the input scalar into d subscalars and records them by using record and optimized align algorithm this helps us uh, computing uh, a times p in in a regular manner in our algorithm k is the base which is greater than or equals to m is the order of p and the scalar a is co prime with m d is the number of subscalars and w is the length of each subscalars our algorithm has three stages pre computation recording and evaluation in pre computation stage we compute points pi equals k, k to the power iw uh, times p and store uh, and store the uh, the points in the following form uh, in the following form in this form in this set then in recording stage uh, it records the top subscalar into uh, in, into signed non zero representations and record the rest subscalars use, uh, according to the signs of the top subscalar finally the evaluation stage we perform in the evaluation evaluation stage we perform an addition and a k multiplication to compute a times p at each of its iteration we express the storage cost in terms of number of points stored in the pre computation stage that is k minus 1 times k to the d minus 1 since the length of the of each of the subscalars uh, is w equals l to l times k, log k2 by d the the computation cobs uh, computation uh, cost turns out to be uh, l times l uh, log k2 by d many k multiplications and additions our algorithm can also be used to modify uh, or, or or our algorithm can also be modified to use uh, split and com method in that case each of the subscalars is further subdivided into v subscalars v or v sub subscalars this increases the storage cost while making the algorithm faster by reducing the number of addition and uh, k multiplication operations in what case we modify our storage and computation costs as it is shown here now looking at the cost per bit unit and the storage for a fixed d for k equals 2 and 3 we find some winning cases for k equals 3 this says that in some scenarios where number of subscalars d is fixed our algorithm can be useful since it works for any base so this is our scalar multiplication so in the pre computation st uh, stage we uh, compute and store these points in recording stage uh, we record the scalars and in the evaluation stage uh, e each iteration we perform a, a k multiplication and an addition with the 
pre-computed points. So we can say in the conclusion, the, re the regular nature of our algorithm can make them resistant against timing attacks. We consider twisted word curves and projective coordinate in our scalar multiplication algorithm, but a good comp comp comparison can be done when we take tripling oriented DIK curve for k equals three setting, while on the other hand, twisted word curves with the mix up of projective and extended coordinate system for k equals two. And a very a, a detailed C implementation uh, will also be very insightful to see how our theoretical costs reflect the timing achieved from both uh, variable scalar fixed base and variable scalar variable base setting. Thank you. Thank you for listening.